down, so maybe still a chance. <laughs> well, <laughs> make your mistakes early. We always say, uh, if you do it on the last leg, you're out of the running. Uh, Stuic, Stuic in a Hoffa Zweiger Hauser is actually a pretty handy team, Mike. But they're still relying on one of the big nations to make uh, to make a complete holix of it and do penalty loops. They are, but I'm surprised that Stuic there, uh, she normally gets five out of five, uh, but she used all three spares there, so feeling the pace maybe, or feeling the nerves. Yeah, nice shooting from France with Bescon, and uh, she'll be delighted with that. The French haven't won a relay so far this season, but they've been on the podium in three of the four events as we look at the order coming out 556 after the first shoot expecting a winning time uh, let's go for somewhere around 112 113 germany won here last relay here was in 2016 and germany won in 111 31 but the course is different and it's considerably harder Welcome back to Pacuca, Italy leading the way in the early stages of the women's 4x6. Vitozzi with a clear shoot, uh, had a 4.7 second lead coming out of the range. He's actually up the ante here uh, and making the others work for it. Tandervold for Norway just working her way up into second place. Uh, good, a good bronze and a well-deserved bronze for Tandervold, Mike, in the individual. Oh, it was everything she needed. Uh, the season hasn't gone well. She and she put pressure on herself this season because she'd spent so much time training with Tyrrell Ekhoff, and I think she really thought she'd be uh, up there uh, with a similar results to Tyrrell. But it hasn't been the way, and and I think that will build her confidence back. And I'm certainly looking good today on the track. Yeah, the next shoot so important. Uh, is that uh, Kriuka going through for Belarus? Looks to have poles about uh, six inches too long. I wonder whether she broke one and picked up one that's uh, extraordinarily long. I don't know whether we'll get to see her action again, but uh, it sticks out a mile. <laughs> Interesting. And Vitozzi's looking so good. Uh, she's had a fluctuation here, hasn't she, throughout the championships? A good result, uh, one good result, but the rest... Uh, quite poor the first day in fact where she did well in the mixed relay and then a fifth in the sprint but then 48th and 38th after that yeah 23 teams starting mike uh, of course if you get lapped uh, and it's only a two kilometer loop 
uh, you are pulled out. I, I will guarantee that Korea do not reach the end of this race. They've already done three penalty loops. Uh, I suspect they might be lapped before the end of the second leg, which is unfortunate for them. Uh, we've had two teams with uh, penalties so far. Latvia also on the penalty loop. Otherwise, everyone else clear. And the uh, top seven teams going clear. No spares required. Italy to get a podium, I suspect, have to shoot 0 5 or maybe six spares. That is excellent from Vitozzi. Oh, she sets the standard, and that will uh, certainly give hope to the rest of the Italian team. Carrara is next, and then San Filippo. But you know all about the Italian team two immensely strong athletes and two uh, who aren't quite up to the world level. Germany and RBU shoot five with five. One miss from Tandravold. She needs this. She needs this. She's holding, holding. That was at least 10 seconds uh, the, for the left handed shot. Well, that was quite spectacular from Vitozzi. She opened up uh, a further, what, six seconds. Uh, she left the here last time five seconds ahead. She opened that up to 11, and then five out of five. Totally fearless. Mike, how much do you think being shooting left-handed, how much does that cost you just in terms of uh, having to turn round uh, twice on every shoot? I honestly think when you when you look when you break it down, I think there's at least uh, two seconds. Say uh, you well, you turn around coming in, you turn around coming out. So two seconds each visit, I think. Uh, so it is a, it is a factor, a small factor. Now is that a new pink stock from uh, Vitozzi? It's so bright. I'm sure I would have recognised it before. <laughs> Uh, but great shooting from Vitozzi. That's the sort of form. She's a bit up and down this season. She's been up and down at these championships. Great sprint event. Look at that shooting. Not not so central, but it was quick. It was rhythmical. And uh, most important of all, all five targets falling. So she suddenly got a 17-second lead. So the chasing teams, France are there. Germany are there. Just behind them is Ukraine. Uh, Ukraine, Mike, of course, the Olympic champions from Sochi in 2014, a timely victory for them then. Uh, I wonder what they can do today. Well, they've got a great record, haven't they? And they've been on the podium in each of the last three world championships, and, and that gives confidence. And, and look at the names uh, they have lined up. Uh, they've all produced good results here. Mikushina, 13th, her only race, so she's fresh leg now uh, taking the, the lead here. Jima so often shoots... Uh, 10 out of 10, and uh, Blaschko, third leg, and Pigrushna on the anchor, who's had some very, very good performances so far here. Germany's uh, Janina Hetish getting ready for leg number two. There's the gap. Uh, it was 17.2 seconds. It looks to me as though Vanessa Hintz is closing that down, but so often with these long shots, uh, the distance is foreshortened and, uh, and Vitozzi actually uh, holding her own so she's uh, had a wonderful wonderful leg here and that 17 seconds has grown to over 20 that is a handy lead uh, but Italy need to be perfect what, what do you think they need to shoot to not to win Mike but to get a medal I think if uh, I, I think they would need to ha use only three spare rounds uh, uh, to have their best possible day to day and, and I think that could well be a podium because uh, the two athletes who have been the weaker athletes historically have become, I think, quite a, a margin stronger. Carrara, 67th last year in the sprint. She was 23rd this year. She's on the second leg, much, much stronger this year. Yeah, and San Filippo, was she ranked 80 in the world at the moment, but she has produced a couple of good results. Uh, if she gets one here today, then Italy have a chance. The thing is, if you're not Norway... Germany or RBU or France, we have to include France in the big four, uh, your, all your athletes have to produce their best. And Vitozzi has certainly done that. She will have enjoyed this. And uh, I think even Dorothy Vera will give her a pat on the back after today's work. <laughs> uh, the Tandra ball left the range 26 behind. I was surprised she was so far back. Took a long time with the spare round. Only one spare round. She's pulled back four seconds of Vitozzi. So Tandra ball, I think the best, the fastest of the chasers. Yeah, Norway with uh, Tyrell Ekhoff on the next leg. But, Mike, uh, Ekhoff, brilliant as she's been this season. She's the World Cup leader. I'm not convinced that she's the best when it comes to playing the chasing game. 
Well, historically, we have seen evidence of that, without a doubt. And I also think today with Tira Lekov, uh, yesterday she didn't have any sting, any punch to chase down uh, Simon uh, going for that gold medal. I, and Tyrrell admitted her legs are very heavy, very tired. Tandervold, on the other hand, looks great. Yeah, they've had 48 hours rest rather than 24. So uh, we, saw, we saw what uh, Hannah Erberg managed to do with a, a two-day rest uh, before the individual. So maybe Ekhoff is back to shape. Plenty of massage, uh, plenty of rest, which is nearly always the cure for these things. We'll see yes, how Hannah. she gets on. Hannah was saying on her rest days she just eats, uh, but you don't, <laughs> you don't want to eat too much because uh, obviously that, that's a bit of weight to carry around. So Michaela Carrara is next to go for Italy. Was she imagining last night that she was going to be handed the lead in the World Championship relay uh, and a substantial lead at that? It's going to be roughly 20 seconds and uh, she can't even see the opposition at the moment. Here they come. The chasers coming around the corner. Italy are away on leg number two. That is the best performance we've seen from Vitozzi so far this year. Ten targets, ten shots. Thank you very much. Brilliant performance from her. Uh, coming in in second place. Now, is that Tandravold has worked wonders, Mike, from over 28 seconds behind. She's got it down to 16 and got in second place. Yes, and the confidence uh, massively up uh, from her, her bronze medal. And as you said, the uh, rest day yesterday didn't play a part in a single relay, single mixed relay. And uh, Ukraine in fourth. That's a uh, decent start from them. Yulia Shima now on course for them. And uh, Shima very good in the prone shoot. So I expect to see uh, Ukraine get within 15 seconds of the leaders after the first shoot. But uh, what happens in the stand, you never quite know. United States out in 12th place, just behind the Czech Republic. And the Czechs now uh, relying on Eva Puskachkova to uh, try and pull them a little closer to the race leaders. So, Italy.
Welcome back to Pekuka. Italy still with the lead, but they're being chased down by Norway. A 20, 20 point or 21 second lead at the uh, exchange. And uh, the Norwegians doing very, very well. Ekhoff actually only had 16 to gain. So she's done that on the first climb just about. And Carrara has company now. Uh, I think she's got to not worry about that, Mike, uh, and just try and uh, keep things calm, race her own race, because if Italy can get to the final stage in the top three or four with Dorothea Vera on the ankle leg, they've got a really good chance of medals. Yes, and Carrara, she, I hope she's been given the information that the rest of the big names are not closing in on her. It's only two left of Germany still, uh, uh, you know, 18 seconds, uh, in fact, 22 now. So losing time to Carrara. So Carrara's still doing a great job. Tiro Lekov is just uh, pushing so hard on the track to take Norway back to the front. Germany will be disappointed to be down in five. Uh, they haven't missed a target so far, so the shooting's going okay for the Germans. Uh, Janina Hetish is out there at the moment. I mentioned she had a very good prone record this season, 96%. Uh, Germany haven't won the gold since 2017, but they did win the World Cup here in uh, 2016. Just for the back, Patrick, we haven't really mentioned Sweden because we haven't seen them, uh, and it was a little controversial. Scott, Scott I am uh, taking the lead out. She's only had one race here and didn't ski fast at all. They're a minute behind after the exchange. That's a real setback for Sweden. Yeah, lots of work for Lynn Persson to do, who is on the second leg for Sweden. Sweden, of course, the Olympic silver medalist, the World Championship silver medalist in Östersund in 2019. And they won uh, in Contiolati earlier this year for the first time in 10 years in a World Cup. So Italy versus Norway, Ekhoff versus Carrara. And the advantage swinging, well, <laughs> temporarily to the Italians. Not for long. Oh, Carrara, the first two go wide. Now she's got to settle in. The pain, Mike. She will be thinking that she's throwing away all the good work that Vitozzi did. Ekhoff, two misses. Uh, gaps again are shortened at the front. Surely France will go five with five. Yes, they do. Thank you very much. That's uh, Anais Chevalier-Boucher. Chloe Chevalier, incidentally, in for Brezard boucher That was a bit controversial in the French team. It, it was. Oh, look at Carrara. She's got one chance left, one bullet left, one target standing, and she's taking a long time. It's a yeah, it's it's out. It's down, but uh, the lead is gone. And uh, so from 20 seconds ahead, uh, two kilometers ago, Italy now find themselves 20 seconds plus behind. Incredible swing. Germany drop another couple of places, down into seventh, 25.8. And Germany missing their first targets on that last shoot. Uh, two misses. Actually, the shooting standard not good for that first prone in the second leg. There's uh, Ekhoff's miss, the first of two. Another miss here for Ekhoff, high right, so low, low left to high right. A little panic there when you flinch up high, but the first one, uh, preemptive maybe, that was an edge shot as well, but it, it went down. Norway have done penalty loop, or one penalty loop in each of their two World Championship title races. Now, Mike, would you put Ekhoff second, third, or fourth? I can't see you putting her on the on the opening leg. No, you're right. I, I would have gone for Ekhoff in her current form and what she did yesterday to uh, to bring Norway back in, into silver medal position in the single relay. I honestly think I would have put Ekhoff last. Uh, Royceland has shown a little wobble, a little nervous uh, uh, procedures and holding too long in the range. So I'm a little nervous for Royceland anchoring. <laughs> you keep talking about yesterday. I'm thinking, did I miss a day's work? <laughs> But Ekhoff uh, taking months. <laughs> no, well, the single mix relay was on Thursday. I think you've slept for 24 hours and missed a day. <laughs> really? <laughs> Maybe I have. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> just, just in case our viewers are thinking they missed some racing yesterday, it's not the case. It was, uh, it was a much-needed well, day off for the for the athletes and the commentators. I take that back. Yes, I'm in glory. <laughs> oh, say two days ago. <laughs> Carrara 21, it's, she's still there, the Italians are still in the race, and her ski speed I thought was, was good Carrara, so hopefully she can give Dorothea Vera a good, uh, a good chance to pull them forward, the Italians. Olimba Carver going through in four, Belarus of course, the Olympic champions from Pyeongchang, Domracheva of course, one of the key players in that particular race. And so Norway with uh, Tirolekov starting to stretch the field now. And uh, Chevalier Boucher of France is on the chase. Shima's going pretty well. Uh, of the big nations, Mike, the uh, RBU down in ninth position. Yes, uh, and, and largely, well, I was going to say largely because of the shooting. It's largely because of their, their ski speed just uh, not happening uh, to lose 32.9. And uh, so far, the shooting has been excellent. Three of eight shoots completed in the relay. Uh, generally, the winner has to avoid the penalty loop. But uh, as I mentioned, Norway have done penalties on each of their last two victories. One with uh, nine spares used, and then in Ostersund it was one and eight. And uh, I'm not sure they will get away with that today. The French are too strong to allow that. Chevalier Boucher, there she is, second place, uh, her ski speed, oh, she's just losing now, that's interesting, she was running level with Ekhoff, but on that uh, downhill section, she seems to have lost a couple of seconds on Ekhoff. Yeah, Jima's lost seven seconds to the race leaders, uh, Belinda Carver was at 20, so three seconds missing, and Carrara just starting to lose a few seconds on this uh, middle loop for the second leg. Hetish of Germany, they're still in touch. Absolutely no need to worry at the moment. Uh, and, and worth saying that Norway were, what, 40 seconds behind last year at the final exchange, and they came through to win it, thanks to uh, Roisland's great form. Yes, Roisland there uh, last year, perfect 10 out of 10. And uh, maybe I've been a little cruel to doubt her, but she really did show some, some panic, some, some different routines here at the World Championships. And, and I suppose when you had five gold medals around your neck and two bronze last year, you, you set yourself up uh, to be watched and, and maybe to feel a little more self-pressure. So the next shoot to determine which team is leading at the halfway stage. Uh, it's worth absolutely nothing other than a little bit of time advantage. So, Tiril Ekhoff, uh, standing shoot's been pretty good. I thought her performance in the single mix was okay, Mike, really. I think uh, Johannes Tingisbo takes the responsibility for not winning that one. Yes, he was disappointed. In fact, he did say that uh, maybe they didn't even deserve it with his, with his poor performance. He was very self-critical. So, another spare required. France with Chevalier Boucher missing early. Ukraine, I think uh, you could see from the uh, body language on the skis that she was right at her limit. And uh, Jima paying a price for that. Belarus, Italy, Poland with a chance to get back in it and close the gap down to under 30 seconds at the front. And it's Belarus that take it. Great shooting from uh, Olimba Kava, who uh, stunned us all with a victory early on in the World Cup season. Carrara, it's okay. She's pushed hard on the two-kilometer track. Uh, she needs one more for Italy. Job done. Yeah, Vitozzi under under 20 seconds for her shoot in the stand position on the first leg. Uh, quickest on this leg is Kadeva, who's gone through in 25.2. Uh, Ekhoff on 38. Uh, thanks to the miss round, Persson of Sweden, 56, and the Swedes still uh, a long, long way off the race leaders today. Germany, 39.8. The gap is slowly getting bigger and bigger, and more misses for the RBU, Mike. Uh, that might seal their fate today. Yes, uh, they, haven't, they haven't got the ski speed. You need good ski legs as well as a very accurate shooting in this race.
So again, the miss from Ekhoff going high right. But no problems with the first spare this time round. Her job is done. All she's got to do is uh, keep the pedal down for the next two kilometres. So keep an eye on the margins. 12.1 was the uh, time behind coming out of the range. We'll get another uh, split, couple of splits on the way around this final loop. France could do with getting within five seconds. Usually the winning margin is only uh, around 10 seconds. Uh, you have to go way back to uh, 2015, Contiolati, where Germany won by a country mile. They were a minute ahead of France on that occasion, but generally uh, between five and ten seconds, the gap between the two leading teams. That essentially, Mike, is just one missed round, one spare round. There's not much in it at all, and look at the gaps. Uh, down to Team 7 to Germany, it's only 39 seconds adrift, so this race is still wide open, and, and Tyrell Eckhoff there uh, dancing her way up the hill. That day's rest yesterday has absolutely paid off. <laughs> 20.7. Yeah, where do they go? Only eight seconds uh, gained, only eight seconds, I say, uh, gained by Ekhoff on this lap so far. So she's done another fantastic job for the Norwegian team, looking to make it three world titles in succession. Russia, the only other team to have uh, done that. And uh, Norway with Ida Lien next, Mike. This is the key leg. Uh, I'm well aware that Lien has been skiing better. She's been shooting okay, but generally she struggles with the standing shoot on every race so far. She's missed two on the last stand. I wonder if that will be in the back of her mind. It probably you're, you're aware of where your weakness is as an athlete. Of course you are. And uh, I hope that she's finding, well, she will find a way to blank that out and just think, okay, three spare rounds, no pressure. Let the shots flow. Yeah, and if Lien does uh, struggle, then... I still think Germany and France are the two danger teams. I know the Erberg sisters on legs three and four for Sweden, but Germany, Mike, Denise Herman and Franziska Preutz, uh, both very quick, both good with a rifle, hugely experienced now at world championship level. Uh, they will challenge and they're certainly going to improve from their current seventh position. And, uh, and Preutz uh, taking the anchor, she's been so safe here with a seventh, an eighth, a fifth, a seventh and a seventh. Some of them were in the in the mix relay and the single mix relay, but uh, she's so consistent. Well, these are the chasing teams. Uh, you'll know the suits by now. Belarus are there, Ukraine are there on the left at the front, Poland just behind them. France starting to struggle a little now. Chevalier Boucher did push hard on that second loop, uh, just unable to stay with uh, Belarus and that's a brilliant finish. Zidara Olimbakava showing her best form uh, and she's certainly someone to watch out for in the mass start tomorrow and uh, she gets a start here. She'll be wearing bib number 12 provided no one pulls out. Um, and Ace Bescant is hoping that someone does because she's first reserve. I'm amazed with uh, Chevalier Boucher. She left the range only 12 behind Ekhoff. She tried to close that down and maybe burnt up. Uh, and now she's down, what? She's down at 26 deficit. So really having a, a bad last day, one kilometer for Boucher. So it's all been about Norway. First in. Uh, to the second exchange. It was the Italians who led by 20 seconds or 16 seconds over Norway. Uh, Tandrevold actually doing such good work at the end of that first leg, Mike. It set Ekhoff up to uh, take the lead, which is exactly what she's done. And now the responsibility on the 23-year-old from Lillehavne, uh, Ida Lien. We'll see how she gets on. She's only 37th in the World Cup standing, so she is not expected to pull away from the rest of the chasers. Belarus now with Hannah Sola, who medalled in the sprint early on in these championships. Ukraine also up there. It's Daria Blaschko on the third leg for them. The French now relying on Chloe Chevalier. Uh, important for Chloe Chevalier that she puts in a good performance, Mike, especially when there's a little bit of controversy uh, and a few raised eyebrows when it comes to your selection.
Yes, very much. And it's her first race here, Chloe Chevalier. And uh, you know what? This may well put her in a state of panic, having to try and fight those 31.8 seconds back. And uh, as I said earlier, Chevalier Boucher really becoming very tired on that uh, last lap. Yeah, Germany are away, a minute behind now, really struggling at the end of that second leg. Uh, Janina Hettish losing a lot of time, uh, Ekhoff actually gaining a lot of time is a, probably a better way of looking at it. But Germany now a minute down at the half, uh, past the halfway stage. Uh, we'll see what they can do in the closing stages. Denise Herman, who will be handing over to Francisca Preutz in uh, around 12 minutes time. Welcome back to Pekuka, Edie Lenz Lien uh, still leading the women's 4x6 for Norway. We're on to leg three, Belarus, Ukraine, Poland, France, all in uh, positions to challenge for medals. The Germans uh, dropping a further 20 seconds on that last leg. They're now a minute behind the leaders and they've got Sweden for company. So those two teams certainly capable of working together and closing up. Italy, who leg up, led after the first leg, are now down in ninth, 106 behind. It's a very interesting relay, Patrick. We've got Belarus second, uh, Ukraine third, Poland, you can see it there, fourth. So many of the expected big names, it's not at the moment happening the way they would like it or working out the way they would like it. But France absolutely in contention. Germany, pressure now. Uh, Herman has to really push the pace on the track and in terms of shooting. Yeah, how much risk do you take at this stage, Mike? They've got Preutz on the last leg, and, and, and I think she knows that if she can get uh, up into the top five, Preutz is certainly capable of getting a medal. But to Germany, a minute behind, do you think they say, OK, the gold isn't going to happen, but uh, let's work out a, some tactics to get, to get one of the medals? Yes, I think I think they'll still be hopeful because, uh, well, with respect, Poland, uh, you know, it becomes a little weaker on legs three and four. Zuk has some good results. She's on this leg and uh, Mada taking the anchor leg. So Poland will, will I think, become a, quite a bit weaker as the race goes to the line. So Lien into the prone position. She's only missed one prone target in these championships so far. 17th in the sprint and the pursuit. Uh, a good 11th place finish in the individual. So she's been performing much, much higher than her expected level at these championships so far. I always love the, the rhythm of uh, Lien shooting. One, two breaths. 
the rifle slowly moves through the target, and it's all about timing. Posh, you oh. thought that was a hit. Yeah, it sounded like one. I was just about to say, best shoot we've seen from a Norwegian so far today. But it uh, turns out she misses one as well. Gets it down at the first time of asking. Belarus missed their opportunity to uh, close the gap on Norway. And the top four teams all missing, which is uh, good news for France and Chloe Chevalier. Working from right to left. First three are down, are they? No, she throws three wide. And that's uh, an expensive mistake. Germany now with Denise Herman. They can probably afford one more miss today if they're going to challenge for medals. Can Denise Herman go five with five? No, is the answer. Uh, Mike, world championship pressure. Oh, so it's such a high factor, always is. And the big names like Herman and uh, it's so many of the big names stumble. And, and the pressure builds, legs three, legs four. The pressure is heaped upon their shoulders. And Herman in danger of going on the penalty loop. She's got three rounds, now has two, uh, but two targets still remaining. Sweden requiring another two, so that's another 12 to 15 seconds gone. The Italians haven't managed to tidy it up after a brilliant, uh, a perfect first leg, I think it's fair to say, from Lisa Vitozzi. Finland, who don't have the services of Makarainen anymore, uh, get five down and move themselves up the order. But Germany uh, are going to find, what's that? That's going to be from a minute behind. It's going to be closer to a minute and a half. It's huge, Patrick, and I think it's very difficult now for even Preutz on good form to pull this back onto a podium, but we'll have to wait and see. It's the, the last end, shot I that went wide for the end. Yeah, I was going to say I would imagine it was high, but it's uh, a little uh, to the right. Nice one to finish. Nice one to finish, but the Norwegians lead only 8.3 seconds, and Hannah Sola uh, is closing and very fast indeed. Now, I think uh, if you've got your money on uh, Belarus leading after three legs, you could be uh, in the money today because uh, Hannah Sola has been shooting brilliantly, uh, shot 10 out of 10 in the sprint to get herself a bronze medal and actually is taking a lot of time out of Lien but no panic for the Norwegians they have Roisland on the last lap uh, whereas Belarus have uh, Krishin Kina and I think uh, Roisland would be fairly confident she'd take that one I think so Krushin Kina you mentioned uh, it hasn't been a great outing in any of the races here so far but it can change when you go three spare rounds in a relay that individual uh, five bullets, five targets, it changes today, you've got three extra, and I, and I think that may well relax Kuchinkina, and uh, she does ski fast, so they're still in the race. And of course Ukraine, who have uh, Elena Pigdrushna on the last leg. The Shemarenko's not being called upon, oh, I could do with a bit of that. Just <laughs> amazing. <laughs> Straighten out the spine, yeah. <laughs> oh, I love it when it clicks all the way through, and uh, <laughs> you have to be you have to be a good person doing it, or it uh, it could go wrong. The million dollar crunch, as it's often known. <laughs> now here comes Sweden, and uh, they pretty much after a bad start from Sweden, Mike, they pretty much kept those levels. Uh, Elvira Erberg certainly fast enough to close the gap. She's got it back to 103, so she's going well. Germany, you can see now behind Sweden in eighth place. Uh, the Austrians, they may have been practicing their dance for, for a, a podium celebration, but they've got work to do if that is going to turn out that way. We haven't mentioned the Americans, Mike, sitting in 10th at the moment, only missing six targets. They're 125 behind and currently ahead of Davidova. Yes, uh, I think they'll be happy. I think they'll be pleased with progress so far. Clear. Egan, uh, zero, 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 and three targets missed in the individual. But as I keep saying, relays are a little different. You, you can buy yourself some comfort in those three extra chances. Well, this is where we see uh, some of the positions. Poland are starting to make good ground. This is a brilliant performance by them. Camilla Zuk. Uh, we'll hand over to Anna Maka. Uh, Zouk, I, I wonder why she didn't take the anchor leg, actually. She's certainly quicker, 
uh, than, than Maka, but I wonder whether she just wanted the pressure off so she could uh, put in an optimal performance. Yes, I think she's a, a safe biathlete, and maybe they wanted to do damage limitation on leg three and uh, play on paper the weakest card last. And, and again, that hope that three spare rounds would build some relaxation. Doesn't always work, though, does it? That was Roisland just going through. Uh, nice to see she's got a smile on her face. Uh, if anyone is used to these sort of situations, it is her. Uh, hugely experienced, hugely successful as well. Roisland, uh, 10 world titles to her name. Ekhoff has nine. Uh, so they'll be closing in on the likes of Neuner and Go Golovina. And of course, Petra Bela, who had nine as well. Anna Sola, she's only managed to pull back four seconds. She departed eight seconds behind. She's only managed to close it by four, so they're running very, very similar ski times. Yeah, I yeah. just wondered whether Sola took, took her foot off the pedal, actually, Mike, just to help her through this standing shoot. She'll be well aware that Lien's stand is the one weak uh, part of her game, and she'll be well aware that she's not struggled with the standing targets so far at these championships. Here we go. Second shoot, third leg, and it's shoot six of eight. Bad start for the Norwegians. Very tough for the end to stay focused. She knows the medals are at stake, but uh, everyone else does. So three apiece, and Poland and Ukraine uh, have a chance. Ukraine taking advantage at the moment. Daria. Blaszko, four out of four, five out of four, we have five out of five, we have a new leader here. Uh, Belarus are going up into second, Norway, they need this, they desperately need this and they've got it. That's good work from the end, Mike, under in immense pressure to clear that when she knew that uh, possibly medals were disappearing if she was on the penalty loop. And France yes, and closing I'll... in as well. They are, and I love the way Lien uh, took her time with that first of the spare rounds, made it count. Uh, often you go into a, a bit of a, a mind block, a mind panic, but she kept very calm. Sweden and Germany just settling on the mat as the leaders depart, already 23 seconds down the track, but uh, they'll still believe they can do something. Elvira Erberg, the younger of the two sisters, matching Denise Herman's shot for shot at the moment that's what you want to see that's what they've needed all the way along and suddenly they really are back into it because the margin is uh, going to be under a minute i think and uh, you never quite know on the last leg the end that shot was two centimeters down at uh, five o'clock on the from the circle You can just feel the, the, the tension, the fear through the face now, but I think she composes very well with the spare rounds. Yeah, only 23. She raced in the relay in uh, Oberhof, didn't do penalties there, but used five spares. Uh, in terms of shooting, incidentally, uh, Ukraine and uh, Belarus have only missed five. Poland even better, only three, and France only two. Now, Lien's starting to show good form, Mike. Uh, I, I was wondering whether she was just skiing within herself on that last lap, uh, knowing that this, this loop here really can punish you. We saw that in the mixed relay for the Norwegians. They saved something for the last lap of the relays. Yes, and uh, Sola, I think, will, will lift her game on this lap as well. Blaschko, in prone shooting, she really, you don't often see it, she punched the mat when she when she got up for, uh, I think she missed two shots prone, but beautiful stand shooting. Now she needs to find the ski time of her life. So have a look at this, the women's relay, we're coming towards the end of leg number three, and the leading five teams are within 50 metres of each other, leading three uh, are pretty much breathing down each other's necks. Not, not the sort of thing you say nowadays, but that is the, the uh, situation. Norway back in front, good work from Lien, and uh, if she's got a good set of skis on, she could extend that to three or four seconds before the final exchange. Norway have uh, Roisland. The uh, Belarus team will be hoping that Christian Kina can do something. France, uh, Julie Simon, Mike. So it could be uh, Norway, France again at the end of that final leg. 
it really could. And Simon uh, has, we saw her two days ago, she has real punch on her skis and, and good feeling through her skis. And they're shooting much, much better when she comes to a relay than when she shoots individually for herself in each race. Germany and Sweden within 47 seconds of the leaders and a lot of that due to their good shooting. Erberg 23 seconds, Hermann 25 on that last stand shoot. Norway by comparison 48.2. Well, Lien is really now, uh, for the error she made on the range, she's working so hard to, uh, to make sure that she's going to try and what, take a, a 8, a 10 second lead into the final leg for Reuschland. Yeah, but Mike, she came out of the range 10 seconds behind. It's a phenomenal ski from Lien on this last lap. 10 seconds behind, so she really has lifted her game. It almost appears as if then that she was skiing within herself prior to the stand shoot, which didn't pay off. Yeah, I, th I, th I think she was, well, it, m it may have done, because if she'd skied as hard as she could, she may have done a penalty loop. So, you know, it's all uh, hypothetical, really, at this stage of the race. But one thing for certain is she's done a lot of damage. 17 seconds quicker than Belarus on this final lap so far. Zucker Poland hanging on in there uh, after putting in a good foot last lap. 9.6 the difference there. And uh, Ukraine's hopes of taking a medal still alive. Uh, a reminder, the, the Olympic champion, from 2014 in Sochi. Looks to me as though Blash goes on her last legs. She is. I was just going to say that she's totally spent the coach. She's desperately trying to say something to, to reach the brain and fire up the muscles, but it, it really isn't happening. France have gone from 25 behind to 35. Germany have gone from 54 behind to 45. So Herman and uh, Elvira Erberg absolutely flying out there on the tracks. Uh, Erberg just losing a little bit of ground, but uh, I think that's the best skiing we've seen from Herman for a long time, Mike. Yes, uh, she needed it. She did, did go well in a prone shooting, three spare rounds, but she really made up for it stand shooting and now on her ski speed. So Lien comes down into the stadium. Final exchange in the women's four by six and the world number three ready to take over the duties for Norway. Norway, remember, looking for their third successive world title in the women's relay. And uh, so far, so good for them. But there's lots of competition and it's very, very close behind. Uh, Roisland has a choice. Does she go hard and try and earn enough time to be able to miss targets or does she just ski her own race? I think she'll go for the latter. It's so Ukraine. great to see it. Belarus and Poland and Ukraine up there. It's refreshing for biathlon to see some of the smaller nations coming through on the big day. Yeah, and remember, Ukraine, the only team, the only team to have taken medals in the last three relays. So uh, a little bit of history going to be made by them if they can make it four out of four. They're sitting in fourth place, only 12, 13 seconds off the podium positions. But uh, I think the worst thing for the uh, Ukrainians, Mike, is that Germany and France and Sweden are closing by the second. And each of those three nations, they've got real good cards to play on the last leg. And, uh, and, and that's, a, that's a little negative for uh, Belarus, Poland and Ukraine. Yeah, good work by Germany on that leg. Uh, they, they were in sixth. They've only moved up one place, but they've got from uh, a minute behind to 43 seconds. Kreutz has still got a lot of work to do. France relying on Julia Simon. Uh, be interesting to see what Simon does on the first lap, Mike. Uh, she's quick enough to close from 44, but remember she's chasing Roisland, and that's no easy task. There are your top 10, 125 separating them, but uh, it's close at the front, only 10 seconds separating the medal positions at the moment. Six kilometers still to go, two shoots to be completed. And Roisland, uh, what do you think? Looking nervous, certainly looking determined, but I wouldn't yes, say I she was relaxed. <laughs> I, you know, so often in sport, when you look at slow motions or when you look at top athletes, it's all about the flow and being relaxed. I agree, she's, she's looking tense at the moment, but it, it takes a little time, doesn't it, to get into your feel and to get into your race pace. And I think she will calm down and uh, let it flow as normal. 
Yeah, Pigdrishna is on a tail. And actually, Pigdrishna's had a couple of good races. 11th in the sprint, 7th in the pursuit. Uh, didn't go quite so well in the uh, individual. She finished down in 43rd position. Maka for Poland. Well, the Poles, as we mentioned earlier, didn't put their uh, strongest on the last leg. So if they hold on to a medal, that would be uh, unbelievable. Here's Pigdrushna when she left after the exchange. She was 23 behind, so that gap is growing. Five seconds already on the first climb. But what about the big guns? France, Sweden and Germany, uh, all of whom will be bitterly disappointed, if not embarrassed, if they don't get themselves a medal in this one. Isn't it incredible? There they are, the big names, or three out of the four big names uh, together, but 51 seconds behind. It's quite quite incredible how this race has panned out today. But I do think that one of those three, two of these three, uh, can still make it up onto the podium. Yeah, I can't see three of them getting on there, but uh, that would take a, ma a major meltdown from uh, Roisland. Um, but there is pressure, and that will certainly affect it. But just surprise, Mike, Germany have gone from 43 behind to 51. So Preutz has done nothing to close the gap on the race leader. Might be an I'm indication very... that Roisland's flying. I'm really surprised, yes, and that, that was where my mind was going. We, we saw her attack up the first climb, but uh, Kruchinkina is managing to, to, to run, well, relatively close to her. So maybe maybe it is those the three big names just playing together in, in positions four, five, and six. Kuchikina doing really well. And uh, Belarus will start to get it sighted. Uh, Olympic medalist, the Olympic gold medalist from Pyeongchang. If they could add the world title to that, that would be uh, a fantastic day for them and for biathlon. Always nice to see different nations. Just a reminder, 29 relays, only four teams have won the women's relay. And uh, Germany, Norway, Russia sharing the bulk of them. The Czech Republic with one. Uh, so get, to get a new nation on that list, uh, I think no one would complain. And I think it does also show how difficult it is. You need four very good athletes in your team to win this relay. Is that a team being pulled out? It is. Or, well, that's unusual. Oh, gone the wrong way. I think she was heading to the finish. <laughs> well, that's, uh, that's a pity for Bulgaria. They started very well. They were up in fifth position after leg one. Latvia and Korea have already been pulled out of the race. Um, Korea started with the worst possible uh, race uh, and actually didn't even make it to the end of uh, leg two, having done three loops on the first shoot here in the women's relay. So first shoot for Roisland in the prone position. Remember, this is leg number four. Five out of five here, but watch those flags. The breeze is picking up from the left. That's Has she spotted pick. that? It's massive, Patrick. That's a centimetre, yeah. one and a half centimetre shift in the fall of the shot. And she hasn't now. twigged on yet. The flags are high. Yeah, well, she went for the sights, but I think she only did one click. This has really unnerved Roisland, and so it should. One more miss, and Norway are on the penalty loop. Belarus unable to mix it, and, uh, well, this is a blessing for Germany, Sweden, and France, Mike. Very, very, very much pressure now for Roisland, uh, and uh, as you say, a real opportunity for the three but, big names but, chasing. But what about Pigdrushna? Five oh. out of five, they're up with the leaders, they might even have the lead. Roisland has got to do the hard work all over again. How things change, a puff of wind, and the Norwegians found faltering. Belarus and Poland finally clear their targets. France are coming through, Julie Simon. Oh, misses number four. That, uh, that may hold them back. Germany get five with five, Preutz brilliant, and and suddenly, from being 50 seconds behind, Germany are going to be within touching distance of the medals. Here they come. They've gone from six up into five, and the margin just 20 seconds. Absolutely brilliant from Preutz. And, and Hannah Auerberg actually doing good work as well, Mike. So the big guns, the cream floating to the top again. 
but the strangest scenario there, that wind, uh, the big strong part of the wind only occurred for about 35 seconds and then it really did drop off for uh, Sweden, France and for Germany. Just one moment, 30 seconds of strong wind and then it calmed down again. Mother Nature yeah, but, playing, a, playing a part. But, but the wind coming from the left and Roisland's second shot going way left uh, and then her next shot going way right. So uh, I, th I think we put it down a human error rather, rather than the wind. But uh, Roisland's still in contention, but she's gone from a 10 second lead to uh, trailing by 0.7. But now she's uh, got the afterburners on again. Yes, Lots that was twists there. and turns. That was a huge pressure, and I think Roisland did very well. And you mentioned that shot missing way left. Sometimes they shade off. You know, you aim into the wind uh, to offset. She only clicked once or twice, so she must have been expecting the wind to drop or gusting. Uh, it paid off in the end. Dorothy Vera, the quickest shoot on that last... Uh prone shoot and that's got the Italians back up into the top 10 they're only 113 behind so there's a slim hope a really slim hope that the Italians can do something here good shooting from Irwin of United States uh, she's gone through the range in 25 seconds keeps the Americans in the top 12 the RBU Mike down in 11th I think we can safely say they are not going to win this one 120 the margin uh, but Germany and Sweden are suddenly close enough to challenge. And look at Preutz, she's absolutely flying up into fifth. Well, I thought uh, Preutz, uh, she had mentioned the fatigue that she's felt uh, on this track, but uh, she really looked sparky this time. And, and why wouldn't you be? You're chasing a medal, the pressure's off, all you can do is better than uh, the seventh place she was handed over to. And, and I think she will, I think she'll get this back onto the podium. OK, are you going to give us your top three? Uh, bearing in mind that Roisland, who's leading at the moment, won the, the, took the last leg of the mixed relay uh, and brought Norway home in gold medal position. But she took all three spares on the standing shoot. I don't think she can afford to do that in this race. She really can't. I'm thinking back to the World Championships last year where Roisland uh, handed over in third position. She had less pressure, 10 out of 10 on that occasion. I think I'll still uh, go with Norway to take the win. I felt that was the case at the start of the day. But I just feel that Germany may well threaten that silver medal. And, uh, and then I think uh, Ukraine, for me, still looking comfortable uh, for, for potentially third. But this can change so quickly in the last stand. Yeah, Poland are still there as well. And if you like backing outsiders, uh, they're the ones to go for. Ranked number 14 in the world standings uh, at the moment. And uh, Poland, who've not done better than 13th in any relay so far this season. To have them sitting up in the top four is incredible. Uh, but they have yet to finish the job. Uh, one of Sweden, Germany and France, Mike, are surely going to make it into the top three. You'd expect it, and um, I'm just thinking of Austria. Hauser's going very well. She's pulled somewhat 12, 14 seconds back, but still 58 behind. If her shooting's five out of five, you never know what happens up at the front where the pressure is greatest. Well, Pig Drishna might fancy her chances. Remember, in the pursuit, uh, where she went from 11th up into 7th place, she shot 20 out of 20. One of very few athletes to do that. So she's uh, been on target so far at these championships, sitting in second at the moment, ready to capitalise on any mistakes made by the Norwegians. Christian Kina for Belarus in three. Maka of Poland, only four seconds outside the medals at the moment. But Germany, who have been over a minute behind, are now to within 19 seconds. Seconds. Hannah Erberg coming out of the range was 26 behind, so uh, that's a little surprising, Mike. She's going to lost nine seconds to uh, the race leaders. And the athlete just in front of her, Preutz, uh, has gained, what, half a second on Roisland. Uh, so Preutz uh, skiing fast, trying to make sure she's up into the range with the big names, put them under a little more pressure. Yeah, and Julie Seymour has lost 10 seconds as well. So I don't know whether that's tactical, whether Erberg and Simon are saving something for the last lap. Uh, often the way to do it, but it takes a big nerve. What we don't know is what rate Roisland has been racing at, but the fact that she hasn't left Pigdrushna behind would suggest to me, Mike, that she's been under control. Very, it's very exciting. It's four teams uh, within, uh, what, 14 seconds, five teams within 19 seconds. It's all up for grabs. Any one of those potentially could come out first.
It's crunch time. Was that a forced smile from uh, Royston? <laughs> Maybe someone said, just smile. I, I liked her tweet after the mixed relay uh, saying, did I make it a little bit too exciting for you? Uh, that's because she missed three and was in danger of going down. This looks more relaxed from Royston. First two are good, but she misses three. Didn't really break the rhythm. That's fantastic discipline under these circumstances. Tyrell Ekhoff's looking on. She desperately wants this one to fall. It does. But Ukraine are not out of this. If Pigdrishna can get it, then uh, Roisland's got some racing to do. But that's another six seconds. And you do not hand Roisland a 10-second advantage. Germany are coming good. It's Preutz who's going to challenge. Absolutely superb shooting from her. And that matches Vitozzi for Italy on the first leg as the best performance of the day. But add the pressure. And and you have to get the uh, the most valuable uh, player award. So it has to go to Preutz with that shoot on the last shoot. Preutz, especially with the way she attacked those two kilometres, she really outskied her, her, her on paper potential and took all the risk on the range. Germany in second place. Hannah Erberg, Mike, five with five. Uh, the fastest shoot, 20.4 from Erberg. Uh, and, and if she was saving herself on the last lap, then we could see some fireworks from her. She's only 20 seconds off the medals at the moment, but she's only got two kilometers to make that up. Uh, easy maths, uh, one second every 100 meters, she'll be there. Oh, what a race. Tyrell Ekov was so nervous watching this, and why wouldn't she be? Uh, she's got three golds. She would love another, and it looks like it will be a fourth gold for uh, Ekov. Well, this secures Norway as the uh, winners of the medal table. Well, great work from Preutz and uh, my goodness, she was left with a, a big job, but uh, Denise Herman struggled, Hettish struggled with the ski speed, Vanessa Hintz not, not so bad on the uh, first leg, just looking at Germany were in third position at the first exchange, by the second exchange they dropped down into sixth position and a minute behind, uh, and I think Preutz Mike might fancy a chance, a crack at the win here, she's closing down on Roisland without a doubt. You know, and it feels like that. The coaches were telling her, look, the way you skied the last lap, this is not impossible. So Preutz is giving motivation there. Pigrushna was trying to close down on Preutz. In fact, she's very much closer now than she was. So uh, this is going to be a, an almighty battle. Ekhoff can't bear to look, Tannenwald <laughs> can't bear to look, uh, and the Norwegian coaches are there. So now Roisland knows exactly what she's got to do. The gap is down to under 10 seconds, and it's uh, it's Petrushna of Ukraine that is closing, sharing the workload with Preutz. But if they push too hard on this climb, Mike, are they going to have what it takes over the last, uh, what have they got, 1,200 metres to go? I think it'll bite them. I think if uh, Pigrushna, but she's put everything on the table at the top of that hill. For me, Roisland is looking spent, and she went the long way round on that top corner, stayed in the sunshine. Those chasing her went into the shade where the snow is a little faster. Well, she's going to have to earn this one, is uh, Roisland. The gap is down at 8.9. Pigrushna, who came out 13 seconds behind, has already clawed back four. And if she gets to within five metres, Mike, she can settle in the slipstream of the Norwegian and may have a crack at putting Ukraine into the gold medal position. They have never, never won this title. Belarus aren't out of it, but uh, it looks to me as though Christian Chichina is just struggling a little. She lost too much time in the range, didn't she, with those spare rounds? Uh, she was, what, some 38, 36 seconds on the range. That's where Belarus have, uh, have, have picked up the big deficit. Under a kilometre su to survive, uh, that sharp right-hander, not brilliantly taken, again, drifting wide. Uh, she's got a little bit of support out there, has to yell to, uh, I'm not quite sure which team that is in, in front of them, might be Slovakia, I, that she's just going Slovakia. past. Yes, Slovakia, Slovakia need to move over. Uh, uh, Royce looks so panicked there, doesn't she? She knows she's got two big names chasing her. 23.1 kilometers of the 24 completed, but uh, Ukraine have not given up on this one. The gap is now 7.4. It was 13.3, so half the deficit cut, but in 1,100 meters, there's only 900 meters to go, and the, the saving grace for the Norwegians in this instance is the last 400 meters is pretty much downhill. Yes, Royceland will be thinking that right now. Get round this bend, another little climb, and then it's, it's a happy little easy journey to the medal, to the gold medal. 
You can yeah, hear her gas right gasping yeah, for yeah. air. Totally in oxygen debt at the moment. And Pigtrishner again on that corner gains another half second or so. And uh, Preutz, who went for me, went just a little bit too fast out of the range, is not going to catch uh, the Ukrainians at the moment as they come down across the valley bottom again closing in on the finish less than 500 meters to go at this stage they'll start to hear the supporters uh, or the the officials and the team supporters in the stadium no crowds here of course in Pakuka. Norway once again have been pushed to the limit but I think they're going to survive this time Roisland has done the job Germany trying to urge uh, Preutz on to go for that silver medal and Roisland makes it but what will she have to give in the mass start tomorrow Here's the sprint for the silver, and it's well, well done, a Preutz. She's found second win there. Comes through to take silver for Germany, having been down in sixth at the halfway stage. And Ukraine get the bronze. The silver, well, a medal is brilliant for Ukraine, Mike. Total outsiders ranked, uh, what were they? Ranked eighth. They haven't done better than fifth all season. So I think uh, once things calm down, they'll be happy with that. I think that uh, yeah, I think they'll be okay with that. But uh, Pigrushna, I think she felt that she was free of Preutz and already done the damage. Wasn't expecting that final attack from Preutz. I think Roisland is already saying, "I'm not taking the anchor leg again." <laughs> uh, Tyrrell, it's your turn. Maybe they'll share it for the rest of the season. But what great work from Norway, Sweden. Uh, Hannah Oberg didn't have it, Mike. She lost 10 seconds on the penultimate lap. She lost another 10 seconds on the final lap, having shot brilliantly. A really impressive 20.4 second shoot to finish off uh, in the range. Poland in six. That's fantastic when you consider their 14th. But at one stage, they were dreaming of medals and the Austrians who've uh, as I said been practicing their dance have nothing to celebrate seventh place I hope we see the dance anyway but I like that team psychology let's practice the dance and, and it kind of takes the pressure off oh if we get on that podium we'll, we'll have a, a relaxed little dance and it didn't work out today but sometimes it does I don't think they're quite good enough as a quartet in terms of shooting and, and, and that uh, 15 spare rounds indicates just that so Germany got very, very close to stopping Norway's run of success, but uh, Norway make it three, uh, four world titles. Is that four world titles in a row? No, it's three in a row, three in a row. They won the Ostersund, they won Antolz, and they've won Pakuka as well. Uh, Preutz on the right of your screen, just out sprinting Pigdrushna of Ukraine. Uh, in the end, it was the Ukrainians who didn't get the pacing quite right. But actually, the last 400 metres here, Mike, it really does pay to be tucked in behind someone before that last uh, sprint into the line. And Preutz did just that. She tucked solo off that final little kicker. The final drop carried all the speed into the final 80 metres. And uh, Pigrishna is so disappointed with that. Most valuable athlete in the Norwegian team. Well, you need a good anchor, and uh, Reuschland not on absolute form. I think she did a great job. Norway take gold for the third World Championships in succession. Reuschland celebrates with relief. Well, that was an absolute nail biter. Normally, uh, as we mentioned earlier, it's about 10 seconds between first and second. This year, the first three teams only 9.2 seconds apart. Uh, it could have gone any which way. One more missed shot from the Norwegians, and it would not have been a golden uh, finish for them. Germany might.